Okay, so let's get started then. My name is Anne Halloran, for those of you I haven't uh, met before. Uh, my company is Intuition. I set it up in 1989, and for a long time I, I worked in the area of leadership and management training, but in 2009 I set up my own online business under practicalmanagementskills.com. And over the last three or four years, I've built up that website and I, I now make an income from it and I hold regular webinars on management skills. In fact, we've got one tomorrow evening. So about two years ago, I was, I was very excited with, with all I was learning about the whole digital marketing field. Um, so I decided to set up training programs and now I'm teaching people in, in Ireland about digital marketing and how to sell online. And our website that supports that is getabusinessonline.com. And we started doing a series of webinars. We had a great webinar last month with Carl Trent. If you missed it, you'll be able to pick up a recording on the website, Get a Business Online. And tonight, I'm delighted to have with us Susan Peach, who's a colleague of mine, and she's got loads to tell us all about selling online and uh, the whole area of relationship marketing. So good evening, Susan. Hi, Anne. Thanks for having me. You're great to come along. And so what I'll do is I'll hand over to you now and let you take it from here. Sure. So I'll just give a brief introduction so you know who you're talking to. Uh, Anne's called me a fitness fanatic, which I guess I am. I've been teaching dance and fitness since I was 19 years old, and I turned 50 this year. So I guess that qualifies me as a fanatic. And something I got into about uh, seven or eight years ago now was the whole pole dance fitness craze. And I've had a big studio, and I've run with that, and then I just kind of had a meltdown after so many years of teaching, and my body had had enough. And by that time, I had discovered, much like Anne, the whole concept of marketing online, doing business online as a business. So I was able to segue into that. And after a number of years of doing that, and uh, I guess I've picked up a bit of knowledge along the way, and, and much like Anne, I now teach online business to local business owners and to other people who'd like to do what I do, which is just doing business online. And I'll just introduce you a little bit to what I am doing online these days. My main website, and this is the website that generates most of my income, is poledancefitness.com. I'll be showing you a few screenshots from that website tonight as a part of examples of what I'll be talking about, so you'll get a glimpse. I also have another website, discovervancouverisland.com. I live on Vancouver Island, and I purchased that site uh, six or seven months ago, and I'm working on that. And then I have a site just personally about what I do in terms of my online business, and that's susanpeach.ca. So that's a little bit about me. Let's get on now and find out how we can help you. This is what I'm going to be talking about today or tonight if you're in the UK. What we'll start with is the psychology of sales. And that sounds a little bit intimidating, but I'm not a psychologist. It really is just all about understanding what makes people want to buy. And tonight I'm going to be talking specifically about something called relationship selling. I'll talk about what it is and also why it's really important to increasing your sales. Then I'll move on to a little bit more about relationship building. So how do you create this foundation? What are the tools you can use to create this foundation relationship that allows you to sell? We all want to make more sales. and What that means is learning how to get there from here. If you're not making sales now, you want to learn how to make sales. But first, there has to be a here to start from. And this is the foundation around relationship building. After I've done that, we'll move on to probably what you all came for, increasing your sales. And I'll give you three simple, actionable steps you can take right away to make it easier for your customers or your visitors to become customers, for your visitors to buy from you. And then I've got a fun short little bonus lesson which just pulls it all together and gives you a little way to remember what is this relationship selling all about. Relationship selling simplified. So let's get started with understanding relationship selling and why it's important. All relationship selling is, is recognizing the fact that most of us, given a choice, prefer to do business with people we know people we like and people we trust. So if you 
invest the time in getting to know your visitor and building a little bit of a relationship with them, they're much more likely to do business with you. You can think of it as a soft sell versus a hard sell approach. And a good classic example that I'm sure everybody can relate to is you th if you think of the, the stereotypical used car salesman. They are known for using a pretty hard sell approach. And contrast that with, often today you'll walk into a retail store and a lot of the salespeople have been trained in relationship selling, whether they call it that or not. It's much more of a soft sell approach. So an example, offline, let's say you walk into a shoe store. Very rarely will you have a salesperson jump all over you and kind of grab you by the coat sleeve and pull you into the store and drag you to the sale table and say, you've got to get 10 of these because this is on sale today. This would look awesome on you. They just don't do that. It's, you're probably going to turn around and run the other way. Instead, and I invite you to just be aware, maybe next time you go into a store and just notice how the salespeople approach you. Often you'll get an acknowledgement and a greeting. Good afternoon, how are you today? That engages you in a conversation. And then they might ask you something about what you're looking for. Oh, were you looking for some shoes for work or for hiking? For a player for work? And then you'll give them a little bit more information. Oh, you're a hiker, are you? I enjoy hiking too. Have you been up to such and such a trail? And they'll chit chat with you a little bit. What they're doing is just getting to know you and allowing you to get to know them a little bit so they can start to build that relationship. Online, we do the same thing. So with our websites, we can do the same thing. It's a little bit different because, of course, we're not face-to-face, -face, but we call that something, uh, we call that pre-selling. And all we're doing is warming up our visitor to hopefully make a sale down the road. Not today necessarily, but down the road. We're laying that foundation. So let's move along then to three reasons why pre-selling is important. You know what it is now. Let's get down to why you should be doing it. Really, it comes down to three things. When you pre-sell effectively, or when you build a relationship with your visitor, the visitor will be more likely to buy from you. They will be more likely to buy because, again, we like to do people business with people we know, like, and trust. So if you think about, for example, any business networking groups you might belong to, uh, your church congregation, your coworkers, your friends and your circle, your close circle of friends and family, if someone in those circles makes a recommendation, you're going to listen to them because you already know them. They'll be more likely also to buy more. Because if people like you and trust you, they're likely to take a bigger risk. So instead of buying just a single item to you know, sort of test the waters on this transaction, they're more likely to buy multiple items and or items that have a higher price tag. So the higher priced your product or service is, I would suggest the more relationship selling, foundation building, pre-selling you need to be doing. And finally, that visitor will probably buy more often because once they've had a good experience, they're going to feel more confident coming back for more of what you have to offer. And they'll likely choose you over a competitor on that basis alone because really, why would they take a new risk elsewhere when they've already had a good experience with you? So there's three very good reasons why you need to be pre-selling. And let's talk now about how to build relationships online. Now this lovely colored flower chart thingy here, you don't need to pay attention to that. I just put this up here to show you that these are many, many ways that you can be building relationships with the visitor. So you can do blogging, you can do social media, you can do podcasts, all those kinds of things do start to do build relationships. But I want to get right back to basics. Because if you're not doing these three things I'm going to share with you in a minute, there's really no point in getting into the nitty gritty of social media and all that other busy work. So let's take a look at the three things you need to do to be building relationships. Number one, be yourself. So that's a picture of me. This is on the home page of my website, front and center, and there I am. I'm an almost 50-year-old woman. I have short hair. I'm flat-chested, and I am not trying to be a 20-year-old, long, blonde-haired, 
full-bosomed pole dancer because I'm not. I just present myself as I am. And I really talk like this. So if you were to walk into one of my classes, I would greet you across the room with, hey, sexy. And when you looked around with that kind of lost look on your face, I'd say, yes, I'm talking to you, honey. So I just try to let my personality come across on my website. I don't have the opportunity to talk face to face, so I really need to just bring that out as much as I can on my website. And that's what being yourself is about. If you, for example, are a terrible speller, rather than trying to kind of hide that on your website, maybe just call yourself out. I mean, out yourself and make a running joke of it if that's your style. If, if your website is kind of lighthearted, you can confess up front. You know, I, I make spelling mistakes. Oops, there I went again. Um, just be who you are and try not to hide behind any facade. It goes a long way towards building trust. So number two is to be interested versus trying to be interesting. If you are in a niche that you know and love, and you are truly interested in what your visitor wants and needs, you will be interesting to them. So don't work on the be interesting part, work on the be interested part. You can use a lot of visitor engagement tools, like blogging, like Facebook commenting, if you use the SBI platform, you have Content 2.0. So there's a lot of tools you can use to speak directly to your visitors. Ask them questions right in your writing. This is a screenshot from a page on my website. And I ask my visitor right there in bold text, do you have a pole dance fitness question? And hopefully the visitor is saying, oh, actually I do. So then I invite them to submit the question, and I will do my best to answer it for you. And then I do. I love getting questions, and I'll, I'll type a nice long reply post it on the website, the visitor feels really, really special because I took the time to answer their question. They're also getting to know me a little bit more and I'm starting to build more trust because they saw that I invited them to submit a question and I told them I would answer and then I did what I said I was going to do and that equals trust building. So really, really important, just be interested in what your visitor wants first. You're laying a foundation and that means first you have to invest the time in building that relationship and the return comes a little bit later. So number three, and this is my third point in how to build relationships online, be honest. And again, this is a, a little screenshot from my website where I do a number of reviews on dance poles. Those are fairly expensive pieces of equipment, so I write quite lengthy, uh, detailed, and honest reviews. There are several polls that I can recommend wholeheartedly, and there are a couple that I will not recommend. And I have good reasons for not recommending them. Even though these companies offer an affiliate commission, for those of you who aren't familiar, that means if I refer someone to their site to buy the poll, the company will give me a commission. Even though they offer a commission, I will not recommend them because I, I can't, don't believe in the product and my relationship with my visitors is too important to send them off to buy a product that I don't think is good just for the short-term gain of getting that one commission. If you do this, your visitors, I believe, will really learn to respect you. You're building more trust because, you know, honestly, if you recommend everything out there, that just doesn't look real. Nothing is perfect. So don't be afraid to be honest and if you can't recommend a product, or you don't think something is good or right for your visitor, say so. They will respect you. You'll build a relationship, which is much more important in the long term. Another example, uh, I don't, didn't put a slide up here. Um, there is a product, believe it or not, called pole dancing gloves. A, fa a cra craze hits, and then all kinds of products come out of the woodwork. Uh, and they're just ridiculous. You stick to the pole like glue, and you can't spin. And they're, they're just horrible. I don't know what purpose they're supposed to serve. Every other website out there has a glowing review of them because they pay a good commission. But I just think they're awful. So again, I don't recommend them. There's plenty of good products you can recommend. And if you are honest about what you are recommending, I believe your visitor is going to take those positive recommendations all the more seriously because they came from you. Okay, let's move along. I think we have time for a few questions now. 
Okay. Um, yes, Susan, that was great. And while people are thinking up the questions, maybe you can put them into the, the chat window. Um, just to add a few points there, you know, I think it's, I think it was a great idea you had there about inviting interaction from your audience, you know, maybe on your homepage even. Um, just to try and build up that that uh, trust element because you know it's all very well if you're Apple or if you're Samsung you know people know you and they know your brand and they'll just go and buy but if you're a small business owner you've really got to work an awful lot harder um, to build that trust so I, think, I thought that was a great idea and I just wondered you know I, I noticed that you know that flower um, chart you had which was quite intimidating when you see all the different platforms that's out there um, can, you, can you tell me what, how much time you can spend on, say, social media in a week? As little as possible. I actually, um, maybe an hour total in the week over a number of days. I am not on my, I do have a Facebook page and a Twitter account for my pole dancing website. Uh, I'm not on there every day. I do post when I uh, build a new page that's of interest. I try to, um, uh, what do you call it, chair links. See, I don't even know the lingo. I spend only as much time really as I need to. It is a good tool, uh, but I still find most of my visitor interaction comes through my website. I give the visitors a lot of opportunities to send in your question about this or ask me about that. And personally, I, I prefer that because I want those people on my site. Um, Facebook and Twitter are great, but I, I want to move that conversation back to my site eventually. So I'm not too concerned that I'm not a social media guru yet. Okay. Well, you, you seem to be doing very well anyway without it. But, um, you know, it's, it is increasingly important, the whole social media um, platform, you know. So I suppose we, even, even though you mightn't be naturally on Facebook and, and LinkedIn and these different sites, it's still important, I suppose, to have a kind of a business page on them and, and to interact and find out what works, you know, what does bring yes, traffic to your site. Yes, I do agree, and uh, you know, I do find the Facebook page helpful for a number of different things. Um, it, it's just really a time factor. You've got to determine where your time is best spent, and I know in working with people who are fairly new to online business, I'm frequently coaching them because Facebook is it's everywhere. Everybody knows about Facebook, and often I hear, oh, I'll just start a Facebook page, or oh, I'll just post that on Facebook. So I'm always reinforcing, while your website is new, you need to put your energy there because you're building your foundation again. If you spend all your time on Facebook when you've only got five likes on your page, that's not a good use of your time. So build both simultaneously, but in the beginning, you own your website. Focus on building that. That's what you own and control. Bring the social media in a little bit later when you're starting to get an audience to work with. Okay, that sounds like great advice, Susan. Okay, so let's uh, move on, I think. Sure. Okay, so this next part is, is getting fun. We're going to talk about how to sell more. And this is when we get into what can we do to increase sales. There are lots and lots of ways to make more sales. And there's all kinds of people who are experts in that. But what I'm going to do is just share with you three simple techniques that I use myself, that I can show you examples of, and that have worked really well for me. They're not complicated. So now that you have built that foundation, that relationship, the pre-selling, let's have a look. So the first thing that I can suggest is that you give something away. The second is that you give direction. And the third is that you give options. Let's take a look at each one of these individually now. So we'll start with giving something away. And there is a... Um, a phrase or a term or a, a concept called uh, the law of reciprocity. And what that means is that if I give you something, there's a little subconscious thing going on at the back of your mind that, oh, they just gave me something. I should give them something in return. And that's certainly valid. However, I don't ever offer something with that end goal in mind. I'm going to give my visitor something so they'll buy from me. Uh -uh. It may happen. But I like to think of this also as just an extension of the pre-selling cycle. Here's an example from my website. 
I have a whole section on pole exercises and stretching and cardio. So it's really about fitness on the pole. And what I did a couple of years back was I made a series of three DVDs. One focuses on strength training, one focuses on flexibility, and one focuses on cardio. So it's all on the pole, and there's a three DVD set. And obviously, that's my goal, is to sell these DVDs. So I have a page, and if you look at the top of the page, the green headline says, Free Pole Exercises. So I'm giving something away free on this page. This is not a sales page for my DVD, although you'll see it over there in the right-hand column. There's a little subliminal message. See the, dark, the dancer's toe pointing right towards the Buy Now button. I was pretty pleased with that. But I can't show you live. Uh, we didn't want to do live, um, uh, go live to the websites just because connection speeds may make that a little bit rough. But we'll go to the next slide here. And all, all I'm doing is scrolling down the page. I give them three free pull exercises to build strength. So the visitor can click on any one of those links or photos, and they'll go to a whole page with photos and descriptions and safety tips, how to make it harder, how to make it easier. It's all about that exercise, and it's free. They've got three of them there. So I feed this to them. Down at the bottom of that page with the green highlighting, you'll see I've written, how are you doing so far? I mean, do you like what you see here? We'll scroll down the page a little bit farther, and this is the screenshot a little further down my page. All I do is I feed right in. Did you like that? Is it working for you? You know what? Here's another great resource that you might find really helpful. And I promote the DVD that is full of strength exercises. So they've come to a page looking for fitness exercises on the poll. I've given them something for free, and then I have simply offered another helpful resource. No hard selling at all, it just flows pretty smoothly right into that. So there's an example of giving something before you receive. And everybody's niche will be different, so you'll need to think creatively about what you can offer your visitor in your niche, or your niche, sorry if we have American visitors on the phone. Uh, can you have a, an ebook or an audio interview or um, a video series? Can you give something away that's truly useful to your visitor, that is a continuation of that pre-selling cycle, that builds the trust, that helps them get to know you and trust you, and then the sale just naturally flows from that. So I really encourage you to give some thought to this. Let's move on now to uh, point number two, which is giving direction. Now, this uh, series of screenshots is from the website of a student of mine, Don. I'm not sure if he's on the webinar today, but if you are, hi, Don, and thank you for allowing me to use you as an example. Oops, we'll just go back for a second, sorry. The first thing I want to talk about in giving direction is you've got to ask for the sale, or at least tell them where to click. An example here, if you look at Don's web page, it's obviously about scuba diving. And just above the first image there, he says, are you looking for some great gift ideas? Click here. So this is the after shot. I can't remember what he had there before, but it was something fairly generic, like uh, you can also find lots of great gifts for divers. And there was no link, there was no direction to do anything. So I suggested Don make that a little bit more obvious. Click here, and it's a link. So if you're looking for a gift, click. It seems obvious. But never, never assume that people are going to figure this out for themselves. Let's move a little bit on down uh, uh, Don's page now as he develops this concept. So assume nothing is my point here. Uh, on this page, this is a, a before shot of what Don was doing. He was promoting some different items that divers might want. And you'll see he has a, a little block of text. And then he's pulled this. Um, image right from Amazon, Amazon.com, where the item is available because they have an affiliate program and Don can earn a commission. And what he's done is just pulled the standard image that Amazon provides. It's the picture in a little box, and down at the bottom you might be able to see it says buy now on Amazon.com. Uh, what I suggested Don do, and we'll, I'll show you that slide in just a second, is that People are 
almost desensitized to these images because everybody uses this. It's the default and it's really not as obvious as it could be. I tend to get blindness and not even really see that there's a buy button there. So in putting this up like this, Dawn just assumed that people would know they can click there and they'd go buy it on Amazon. Instead, and we'll show you this on the next slide now, what I suggested that he do is take that a step further and make it really easy and really obvious. And I believe he's even improved this a little more since I took this screenshot. What he's done in this case is that he's taken the picture out of the box and just put the image on the site, put it centered so it's obvious to see, and then you'll see a link in that just under the first paragraph or two. Click here to get Amazon's best price. Again, there's direction that we're giving the visitor. We're making it easy. We're making it obvious. And they're saying to themselves, oh, he's helping me get the best price. If I click here, I'm going to get a deal. So it's, it's, it's something that is helpful to the visitors. If you're recommending a product or a service on your site, your visitor needs to be able to click somewhere to get it, or at the very least to get more information. Otherwise, it's like leading them into a dead end. It's just good customer service. You can think of it as a continuation of the reselling cycle because if you've done a good job of reselling, they want to buy. So don't, so make, don't it make it difficult for them. Make it, make it easy. Hi. Sorry, Susan, to interrupt you there. The sound has gone a little bit um, haywire on us, I think. Oops, so, okay, are people, are people having hearing trouble hearing me? Yes, there's a bit of an echo on the line, I think. Um, I hope it goes away. I hope it's just a temporary thing. Okay, I'm hearing, I'm hearing fine. Hold on. Yes, no, there's a, bit, there's a bit of an echo on the line, so unless you can kind of um, reconnect or something. Okay, I don't know if you can ask, we can ask or raise your hands if you're having your problems. Or yes, there's a lot of people saying that they can't hear right now. Um, maybe, um, yes, I think they can hear me. So I'm going to try and um, carry on for a while until maybe you can sort it out at your end, uh, Susan. I don't know if there's something you can do. Sure, you go ahead and do that, and I'll just unplug and try to reset. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm not going to, to be as um, fluent as um, Susan with this, but let's see what we can do. And Susan, you can always uh, drop me a note if I'm missing a point. Sure, so, sure. Um, Okay, so what you've got to do, and I love this point actually when you, you mentioned it to me before, is that you've got to give people um, options. And um, for example, you know, they might, they might want the product that you're offering, they might be interested in the DVDs or whatever. So rather than lose them at that point, offer them something else. So I think here you can see that uh, Susan's offering pole dancing lessons and um, a pole dancing manual. So that there's, a, there's lots to do there. And as well, she's got uh, plus size pole dancing information, you know, maybe clothes for the, for the larger, larger student and uh, pictures of pole dancing and d different tips. And I thought that was fantastic. And I've actually uh, um, used that tip in my own business because we, we run training courses and uh, online and, you know, we run a lot of funded programs. And if someone didn't qualify for a funded program, we, we lost them. Whereas now we're, we're starting to do mentoring, so we can give one-on-one -on -one teaching as well. So always think about your drop-off points, I think, where you're losing your students. Yeah. And how's my audio now? Is oh, it sounding any better? Oh, it's great. Yeah, that's much uh, better. <laughs> okay. I think over. you did great on that slide. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that was just about uh, the example I was giving there is that I have a free directory on my website where um, people can find a studio in their area. And if there isn't a studio, as Anne said, or if you don't qualify, then what else can I offer you? You might want to learn at home. You might want to uh, get this manual or these DVDs. And then uh, here's some reviews on dance polls. So continue to be helpful and give options to them. This slide shows another example of giving options. I also have a section on my website with pole dancing shoes. And uh, people will look for all kinds of crazy things. This particular page is not something I care for. I'm not the chunky look girl, but some people like it. And then they might browse and they might not see anything they like. So if it's not quite what they're looking for, be prepared to make another suggestion. Going back to our offline example, if you're shopping for shoes, and you found a lovely pair of uh, blue suede shoes that you love, but the heel is four inches high and that's too high for you, 
the salesperson isn't going to say, oh, too bad, you know, good luck somewhere else, goodbye. They're going to say, oh, well, you know, right over here we have a, another pair of blue suede shoes with just a two-inch heel. Would you like to try this one on? So make another suggestion. Suggestion, that's also called suggestive, suggestive selling. Sorry, I'm tripping over my G's. When I was 15 and I got my first job at McDonald's, we were trained in that. That's where you get the cliche phrase, would you like fries with that, sir? We were taught to say that. If you didn't order a drink, would you like a milkshake? If you didn't order fries, would you like fries? So just keep making suggestions. On this page at the bottom, you'll see I've written, if you didn't say anything you like, hey, don't worry, girlfriend, here's some more ideas. Sexy shoes, check out some boots, or how about some clothing instead if you're not feeling like looking at shoes anymore. One more example coming up in terms of giving people options is, let's bring up the next slide, here we go, is that we need to, there it is, if they change their mind, which is, commonly happens, we need to just be able to point them somewhere else. So in this case, I have this page of uh, shorts for pole dancing. Believe it or not, you do need very short shorts because you've got to be able to grip the pole. But sometimes people are looking for pole dancing shorts or booty shorts or whatever they call them, and they land on this page and they go, oh, I didn't realize that the shorts were quite that short. So oh, they've changed their mind. No problem. I've got something else that might be more your style. These shorts have a little more coverage, um, different colors, different styles, different embellishments. So again, think like a retail salesperson. What else can you offer so they don't leave your store and go to another one? So that is my three tips on how to sell more. And again, I think we've got a break for questions if anyone would like to ask. Yes, if you want to type anything into the uh, chat window, please do so. And thanks again for that. Three, three great ideas there. Um, yeah, I mean... What do you think has worked best for you? I mean, can you think of one, um, what, while they're typing in ideas, one particular approach that you use that really sold you a lot of product? Um, well, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell from the web page because, you know, people will hopefully move around. But one metric I do track is how many pages people visit on my site. And if you have Google Analytics or Stat Counter installed, you can find out these things. Um, and that tells me in general that people aren't just going to one page and then leaving. So um, the number of pages viewed per visitor has certainly increased since I've started to put particularly the image links. Oh, you don't like this? Try that. Here's another option. So in that sense, it has certainly increased uh, visitors moving around my site. And there are so also some off-site examples I can give you. And one I was working on just before the webinar uh, came live is that I often get people emailing me um, as a result of the information on my site. I'm looking at this particular dance poll. Have you heard of this one? What do you think? And, and I make it a point to answer emails from visitors as quickly as possible. So I was having a little back and forth with this woman, almost in real time. And she was saying, oh my gosh, you're so helpful. Wow, that's such a quick reply. I didn't really expect to get a real person. That's pre-selling again. And uh, she was going back and forth, and I helped her narrow down her choice, and she's off to buy the poll that I recommended. So again, just investing some time, uh, letting her know what her options were, and being a real person, giving real advice. It really works well. Okay. Now, Margaret's asking, um, do you sell any other products that you own yourself apart from the DVDs, or is it all affiliate sales? Uh, yeah, good question. Most of what I do is affiliate sales right now. I am uh, actually setting up a, a store in the background that I will be going uh, online with to my site. I'm kind of moving to the next level. Uh, mostly that will be drop shipping. I do have... Um, the DVDs, and I also have a product that I ship from home. It's like a, it's not a glove, but it's sort of an arm covering, an arm protection. Um, and I, you know, personally, I like the affiliate model because I'm lazy, <laughs> and um, I'll ship the gloves because I can walk across the street and drop them in the post box, and I'll ship the DVDs because they actually come from my fulfillment house in New York. I don't want to stock a lot of inventory, so that model works well for me. Okay, and when you mentioned drop shipping, maybe you'd just like to explain that for people that wouldn't be used to that term. Sure, yeah, that's, so I consider that 
the next step up from the affiliate model. There is usually a bit of a wider profit margin in that. Uh, and all that means is that you're buying at wholesale and selling at retail, but you're not stocking inventory. So you can promote the product on your website and put your, your PayPal button, buy now from me. The person orders and you receive the money into your PayPal account, the retail price. You then turn around and email your supplier and send them the wholesale price. And the supplier ships directly to the customer. So there's a little bit more work. You have to receive the money and send the money on, but you keep the difference between the wholesale cost and the retail without having to buy 50 of some item or three cases of some item and store it. Okay, that sounds like a good approach. Right, so just to, um, to summarize then, I suppose the three ways to sell more that you recommended are to give something away, to give some direction on the site so that people are, are told where to click, and then to give options, so not just give them the one option, you know, if, if they don't like that, give them something else. Yep, in okay. a nutshell, that's it. Those are the three methods that I use most often. Yeah, very simple, yeah, and very effective, you know, and it, as you said, it's going right back to the basics, so I think that's great. Um, now, I've got another question here from uh, Donald. He's asking, do you interact with real people at, at suppliers of products you sell, or is the relationship pretty much automated through an affiliate management system? Uh, sorry, I lost you just for a second, Dan. Was Donald asking about the, my interaction with the customer? Well, the suppliers of products. Do you interact with real oh. people? Yes, I do, yes, and I, uh, that's something I would absolutely recommend. Uh, a number of times I've come across a product that I thought, wow, my visitor would love this, this would be useful. So I go on the supplier's website, they don't say anything about wholesaling or affiliate programs, so I'll contact them either by phone or by email, and I'll say, do you have an affiliate program or do you drop ship? And often they've come back with, what's an affiliate program? <laughs> so it's an opportunity for me to educate the supplier. Uh, frequently they'll go, oh, I had no idea. I'll set that up. What do you recommend? So I recommend some affiliate programs, often on which I can earn an affiliate commission, strangely enough. And uh, again, I recommend the ones I like. They'll frequently start their own affiliate program, and then I have access to that product. And also, I'm um, uh, it, like, don't be afraid to contact people by phone or by email. Sometimes we're afraid to because we think, oh, these are big companies, they won't have time for me. And I am starting to realize people think the same thing about me. They think I'm some big company, you know, and when I give them a personal reply, they're odd. So I don't tell them, well, it's just me in my little home office. But these companies want to do business with you, and they have gone out of their way to do things to make it easier for me to do business. So absolutely, develop that personal relationship with your suppliers as well. And can I ask you which uh, type of affiliate um, sites you use? You know, are there uh, some you'd yes, recommend? It, there are. There's a number that I use. Some of the suppliers I work with have their own in-house affiliate program. Now, if you're looking for them, what I suggest is you go to the website that has the product that you want, and they usually don't make it too obvious that they have an affiliate program because they don't want all their customers clicking through and you know getting lost. But normally at the bottom of the page, you'll look at those links at the very bottom, and if they have an affiliate program, you'll see a link down there. And then if they don't, then you can uh, contact them to ask. So some have an in-house one, which just means the software runs on their own server and you have to log into their site to, to get your stats. Um, but there are others uh, that are affiliate aggregates and they bring together a number, hundreds usually, of affiliate programs under one umbrella. And I really like those because then you all of the commissions are pooled and you get one check instead of little dribs and drabs here and there, and they do all the management. They have lots of tracking tools. So several that I use are shareasale.com. That's all one word, shareasale.com. Uh, commissionjunction.com. Those are the two biggies. I use a few others, but you can just Google affiliate networks. Um, one word of caution, or not caution, but just something to be aware of with these uh, aggregate programs is that make sure before you sign up that they offer you know, a number of products and companies that you can work with. Otherwise, if you spread yourself too thin and you sign up with 10 different affiliate aggregators, then you're going to end up spreading your commissions very thin and you're going to wait longer for a check. 
So you also have a lot more management to do. You're logging into various accounts. So try to find one. For me, it was share a sale that had a lot of products I can use. That's my primary one. And then I do most of my affiliate marketing through one platform. Okay, that sounds like good, great advice there. So will we move on to the last section? Yeah, let's get, okay. get along now to the bonus lesson. And this is just okay. something I put in to, just to help simplify things. Not that I think these are complicated lessons. But here it is in a nutshell. And I, I had a little fun with this. I'm using the analogy of a romantic relationship. I have one right now. I don't know if you do, but I'm sure you can understand as we go along. So here's how the whole pre-selling or relationship selling cycle works. First of all, you have the courtship phase. And that's where we go back to being yourself, being interested, and being honest. Earn the trust of your visitor. Give high quality engaging information. You've got your newsletter or your e-zine. You're giving away free stuff with no strings. You're doing the social media thing. You're responding promptly to emails. You're being genuinely interested. And if you think about the early phases of a relationship, you know, my guy I'm with now, he, he spotted me in the gym one day. And, you know, he just would strike up a conversation with me on the treadmill, chat a little bit. He'd ask me about myself. He'd be interested. Uh, starting to earn my trust, starting to build a relationship. Same thing with your visitors. Then the commitment phase, we're not talking marriage here. Commitment is like she said yes to the first date, okay? So for you, commitment is when they hit the buy now button. In a relationship, you know, it's the first date. Great, I've got a commitment. I, I've only just begun, but I'm somewhere. So you've got to pre-sell yourself before you can expect a yes. If my guy, Jerry is his name, if he just walked up to me one day and said, hey, do you want to go out with me? I would have said, take a hike, buddy. I don't know anything about you. See, so he pre-sold himself, and you are pre-selling your visitor by all these relationship building things you're doing. And then finally, after you get that first buy, you've got to think of it as the beginning of the relationship in the same way that the first date is potentially the beginning of a relationship. If you drop it at the first sale, you're losing a huge opportunity. So continue the relationship building. Get creative about continuing that relationship. So you to keep the customer engaged and interested in what you have to offer. So in selling, it's about finding ways that work for your customer to stay in touch, offering them more products they might find helpful, and showing them that you care about more than just the first sale. So you're not always looking to make that second sale right away. Maybe you're looking to do a little more relationship building, earning a little more trust before they're going to buy something bigger from you. So this is it in a nutshell. You can think of it as the three C's of relationship, shell, relationship selling, if that helps. And then finally, let's look at how do you know that you've got it right? Because people will often ask me, OK, I'm, I'm doing this stuff, or I'm going to start doing it, but you know, how do I measure? And I find with relationship selling, it is a little bit trickier to measure directly, and you asked me the question earlier about, you know, how does it work for me? And the reason is that it's not a cut and dried, I do X and I get Y. Instead, we're doing this process of relationship building, and then at some point in the future, we're going to have a loyal customer. So here's how I measure when I've got it right. I'll just show you this last slide here. My measurement is if both you and your customer think you won, got the better deal, then you're doing it right. And in my relationship with Jerry, we both think we got the better deal. I'm thinking, wow, what an awesome guy. It's amazing he wants to be with me. And he's thinking, oh my gosh, what an awesome girl. I can't believe she picked me. That's a win-win. And that's what you want. Your customer is amazed to do business with you. They're telling all their friends. They say, this is awesome and incredible. You've got to go buy from Susan. And I'm thinking, rockin', I just made another sale and wasn't that fun. So that's how I would suggest you can determine whether or not you're successful with relationship marketing. And if you try it, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it as well. OK, so well, Donald, that's great. To, uh, yeah, just come in there. I mean, now Donald. Pass on any more questions? Yes, well, Donald wants to know, are you going to be offering relationship advice on your site? Don't ask me why he's asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Oh, my, Donald. Well, perhaps, 
Perhaps for a small fee, I could give you some private coaching. Yes, yeah, <laughs> private mentoring there would, would do the job, I think. Yes, no, I, I totally agree with what you said there. You know, it's all, it's a, there's a lot of parallels between the two, um, between, you know, personal relationships and business relationships, really. And I often think there are. Yeah, I think it's a good idea sometimes to to actually map out your journey of service. You know, if you're a customer going onto your website, where what, where do they first land? Where do they go next? What happens there? Do, do you lose them at that point, and why? And what can you do about it? And just to make it a pleasant experience all the way through. And yes, I think you're very you're very right about you sell products to people, and sometimes then you know you you forget to follow up maybe, and you need to have a second channel. For those people that you can upsell and sell them maybe more more expensive products, you start off with your more reasonable ones and then work your way through, you know, and it's that sequential selling that's so important. Absolutely, and I just want to stress the point too that, you know, that that's the ultimate goal on our end. We're in business to make money and there's nothing wrong with that. Our goal is to make the sale. And I think it's really important to keep in mind that the way we're going to make that sale is by wowing our customer. So if we go in with the mindset that, okay, I've made one sale, how do I make the next? That's not quite where I'm going. We're going to make that next sale, but we're going to do it by just continuing to build that relationship that our customer values. And I think the, the easiest way to see this is to turn it around and look at your own experience with a sales process that you felt really good about and just look at what happened for you during that whole transaction period from the moment you landed on the site or walked into the store to the moment you took out your credit card. And I think you'll probably see the transactions that you are most thrilled with, there was a lot of relationship building going on throughout that whole process. It, well, I'd have to agree with that now because I know that the majority of my sales are from my subscribers to my e-zine and my webinars. You know, there's a definite pattern there. So because they trust me, because they, you know, they've listened to me or they've downloaded my three steps to better management or whatever it is, you know. Uh, so that, that's very important. Now, Margaret's asking a question here. What kind of traffic numbers would you say are necessary to make some decent money from selling on your site? Oh, loaded question. I think, uh, I hate saying this, but it depends. It depends on your niche. It depends on the number of products that are available. It depends on the price points that you can uh, charge for them. So there are a lot of uh, variables. And, you know, people often ask me if I can sort of twist that question a little bit, uh, and I hope this works for you, when do I start monetizing? When is it worthwhile to start selling? And there's really two schools of thought I have found about that. One school of thought says, you know what, don't worry about selling right away. Build your traffic, build your presence, build the relationships, build the quality, put your time into that, and wait until you've got you know, 100 or 200 visitors a day to your site, because remember online, uh, a 2% conversion rate, like if 2% of the people who visit your site buy something, that's outstanding. So if you've got 100 visitors a day, you know, you might get one or two sales, uh, possibly. Uh, but then if you've got 25 pages, then you've got to know how many are going to eat page. It gets a little complicated. But let's get back to the question. So that's one school of thought. Don't worry about selling till you've got the traffic. The other school of thought says, you know what, if uh, you're going to start with a monetization model that's not very labor intensive, like Google AdSense, for example, or an affiliate product that's, you know, you can put up fairly quickly, why not? You know, what's the harm in having it up there? Um, my personal preference is wait. Uh, you know, focus on good quality content because and I'm only speaking from personal experience. When I have put up a new product or done something new with monetization, it's a pretty shiny thing and it distracts me. I waste way too much time checking my stats. Did I make a sale today? How many people went to that page? When I really could be just focusing on productive work. So that's my suggestion. As hard as it might be, focus on your quality content and the relationship selling foundation before you worry about monetizing. Okay, great. Now, we've just got a few minutes left, so if anyone would like to add something to the discussion or maybe ask a question, if you'd like to raise your hand with the little uh, um, yellow hand icon, please do so, and then we can unmute you.
Now, no one seems to be putting their hand up. I think they must all be very shy. <laughs> um, now, Bill, would you like to speak? I think maybe if I unmute Bill. Bill is um, in Ireland, so let's see. Uh, if you're interested, Bill, you need to um, click on the little uh, yellow hand icon that's on your control panel, and then we'd be able to um, hear what you have to say. Here we go. Hi, Bill. You can hear me. Yes, I can. I've got laryngitis. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I have a, a new product that I'm introducing. It's patent pending technology. It's really simple. You sit at your computer, you watch TV, you lose weight. Simple. No grabbing poles. You sit, you breathe, you flow. Um, but like any furniture or or, or device, uh, people they want to they want to feel it. They want to they want to try it before they buy it. Um, and so I was going into this with the idea. Is I'm going to set. Up, I've got this site up there now. It's trashed. F I T W H I L E U S I T dot com. Fit while you sit with just the letter U instead of the word U. Um, is you, I put it up there. There's the product. You can buy. It. Here's the shop for it. Da 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 da. And um, what I seem to be hearing tonight and from your guests are is really create other reasons to come to the site than just to, to, to buy it. Because right now, um, let's start up a storefront and, and that would be it. But I'm really interested in the affiliate programs. What Do you have any experience introducing brand new tech, patent pen technology, things that people aren't used to? Establishing a value and a way to, to present that online to give them the confidence to say, "Yeah, I'll try this." I mean, hell, I give a sixty-day money-back guarantee because it's not going to be perfect for everybody. But I know a free trial where you try before you buy a program where you fill out a form and I'll send it to you. You can try it. Boom. Okay. Well, if, yeah, if it, I have just one point there that I could add, and then maybe if Susan wants to come in. I mean, you, you really need to have a lot of testimonials because, you know, people see this product, they don't know if it's going to work. Uh, they don't know if you're going to send it to, to them. And so if you have testimonials up there from, you know, other people that have used the product, that's going to build the trust and make them feel a bit more secure. And ideally as well, if you have a photograph of the person giving the testimonial because then it looks a lot more authentic. That's just one point I, I, I would suggest. Is there anything else, Susan, you'd like to say? Uh, definitely testimonials. As I said, with a higher priced product, the more sort of backup you need. Uh, to answer your question directly about whether I've had experience introducing a sort of brand new cutting edge product, I wouldn't say yes exactly, although I know when I got into the pole dancing for fitness niche, it was still considered quite uh, edgy in my part of the world. So I found that I did a lot of educating about what it was about and what it wasn't about. Uh, so for example, online, I would suggest definitely video. You've got to show the product, so make some short video clips that show the benefits, not just the features, right, but the benefits of the product. Show it in action. Put some uh, user testimonials there. and. Um, so another thing I can suggest is don't be afraid of uh, lengthy pages. On, I, I have all different lengths of pages on my site. Some are quite short, some are very long. What I have found with my dance poles, that's the, the priciest product that I sell. And again, because people are investing more money, they want more information. So I do very lengthy, detailed reviews, and sometimes people will say to me, gosh, that's a really long page. You know, people probably aren't going to read that. Again, if I look at my stats, the time on page metric for those review pages is great. People are spending three, four, five minutes. So I know they're reading that information. So again, with a higher price product, the more information, the better. You, they're going to have lots of questions, and you don't want them going away with questions unanswered. So do video, do testimonials, do detailed written information, and provide a way right on that page. Email me with your question or live chat me with your question. Here's my toll-free number. Call me now. Give them ways to interact with you so you don't lose them. OK, Bill, does that, does that answer your question? Uh, yes. OK, good. Yes, yes, good. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, I've been putting all the, the videos and the testimonials and going up on the Facebook because that seemed to be getting more, more traffic. 
Um, and the the funny thing is, um, when I give the people out to try it, I say you have to go to the website and write your own testimonial. And so I repeatedly get back emails from from customers saying, "I'm going to eat, I'm going to fill this out. I'm going to put this on that form there, but this is what I'm going to say." So now I'm at the point where I'm just I'm going back to them saying, "Can I just uh, you know get your permission to post your email into the testimonials blog, um, or can I just say you said this instead?" Uh, yeah. Because there, there's, you know, I get lots of promises. I'll do that tomorrow, and they never, no one ever does it. Yeah, so, and we yeah. come back to uh, Bill. We come back to uh, one of my points. I think this fits in nicely with is give options. So, uh, you know, you can use the if you use the SBI platform, you can use Content 2.0. Click here to submit your testimonial, or email it to me, or call me. So yes, make it easy for the visitor and do what works for them. Because of course, you're more invested in getting the testimonial than they are in giving it. So absolutely, you know, take it by any means you can get it. Okay, well that's great now, and I'd just like to thank you, Bill, for um, uh, taking the time to, to ask us your question there. And just to finish up... And um, I see a hand up, is it Cosette? Uh, well, I think that was because she had sound problems. Did you want to say something, oh. Cosette? Hello, Cosette? Uh, no, no, I think she's fine. Okay, so it's coming up to half eight, our time, and... Um, I just want to say thanks to everybody for taking the time to listen in this evening. Um, apologies for the, the sound quality in part of it. I hope it didn't take too much from the webinar. Uh, we will be doing a recording of this and putting it on our website, Get a Business Online, so you'll be able to pick it up and listen to it again there, as well as last month's um, webinar. And I hope you'll join us again next, next month when we'll have another guest speaker in.